What is gold-bearing alluvium? Gold-bearing alluvium refers to unconsolidated sediments, such as gravel, sand, silt, and clay, that contain particles or nuggets of gold. These sediments are usually deposited by the action of running water, such as rivers, streams, or floodplains, and they represent one of the most important natural sources of placer gold. The gold found in alluvium originates from primary deposits, often quartz veins or other hard rock sources, that have been eroded over time by weathering and transported downslope by water. Because of gold's high density and resistance to chemical weathering, it tends to accumulate in certain parts of the river system, forming concentrations that may be mined economically. The nature of gold-bearing alluvium depends on the energy of the transporting stream and the geological environment. In high-energy mountain streams, gold is commonly associated with coarse gravels and cobbles, often trapped behind large boulders, within cracks in bedrock, or in natural riffles where water velocity decreases. In lower-energy environments, such as wide floodplains or deltas, the gold may be fine-grained, mixed with sand, silt, or clay, and more thinly distributed. Over long periods, repeated floods and sedimentary processes can lead to the development of rich placer deposits, some of which become the focus of large-scale mining operations. Historically, gold-bearing alluvium has played a central role in gold rushes and the expansion of mining regions across the world. Many famous gold fields, such as those in California, Alaska, Australia, and South Africa, began with the discovery of placer gold in river gravels. Even today, artisanal and small-scale miners rely heavily on gold-bearing alluvium because it can often be worked with simple tools like pans, sluice boxes, or dredges, without the need for complex and costly extraction methods. In geology and economic exploration, identifying gold-bearing alluvium involves careful mapping of river systems, sediment analysis, and the study of geomorphological features that favor the concentration of heavy minerals. These deposits are not only valuable economically but also provide important clues about the erosion history of a region and the location of potential hard rock gold sources upstream. How is gold-bearing alluvium formed? Gold-bearing alluvium is formed through a long geological process that combines weathering, erosion, transportation, and deposition of gold particles from primary sources into secondary, unconsolidated sediments. Understanding how it forms requires looking at each step in detail, because gold does not originate in the alluvium itself, it must first be released from bedrock before accumulating in river sediments. 1. Weathering of primary gold deposits. The process begins with gold-bearing rocks, often quartz veins or sulfide-rich deposits, hosted in bedrock. Over millions of years, these rocks are exposed to weathering due to temperature changes, rainfall, groundwater circulation, and chemical reactions with oxygen and carbon dioxide. While many minerals break down during weathering, gold is chemically stable and highly resistant to corrosion. This resistance allows gold to remain intact while the surrounding rock crumbles. Eventually, gold particles, flakes, or nuggets are freed from their original host. 2. Erosion and transport by water. Once liberated, gold is carried downslope by gravity, rainwater, landslides, or streams. Rivers and creeks are especially important in transporting gold. Because gold is very dense, about 19 times heavier than water, it behaves differently from lighter minerals. While sand and silt remain suspended in flowing water, gold tends to settle quickly whenever the stream's velocity decreases. This is why gold is often found concentrated in specific parts of a river system, behind large boulders, inside cracks in bedrock, or in natural bends and riffles where the current slows. 3. Sorting and Concentration as rivers transport sediments of all sizes, from clay to large cobbles, natural sorting occurs. The heaviest minerals, called heavy minerals, or black sands, such as magnetite, ilmenite, garnet, and zircon, settle along with gold. Over repeated flood events and continuous sediment movement, gold is mechanically concentrated in layers or lenses within the alluvium. This process of hydraulic concentration is what makes placer deposits economically valuable, since gold becomes enriched in certain zones rather than spread thinly across all sediments. 
4. Deposition in alluvial environments. Gold-bearing alluvium forms in a variety of depositional environments, depending on river dynamics. Streambed placers, found directly within active river channels where moving water continuously sorts sediments. Floodplain placers, formed during overbank flooding when rivers spread fine sediments and gold particles across wide plains. Alluvial terrace deposits, ancient riverbeds preserved above current river levels, where old gold-bearing sediments remain stranded after the river changed course. Deltaic and beach placers, where rivers enter lakes or oceans, gold may settle with other heavy minerals in shoreline or delta deposits. 5. Long-term geological development. Over thousands to millions of years, rivers may cut new channels, abandon old ones, and rework sediments repeatedly. Each episode can enrich gold concentrations in certain spots. Some of the richest placer deposits in history, such as those in California, the Klondike, or Siberia, are the result of repeated erosion and redeposition of gold over long geological timescales. Summary In essence, gold-bearing alluvium forms when gold is released from its hard rock source, carried by water, naturally sorted by density, and deposited in specific sedimentary environments where heavy minerals accumulate. The durability, weight, and chemical stability of gold ensure its survival throughout these processes, allowing it to be preserved as flakes, grains, or nuggets in unconsolidated sediments. The main types of gold-bearing alluvium. Gold-bearing alluvium does not occur in just one form, different river processes, geological settings, and timescales give rise to several distinct types of placer deposits. Each type of gold-bearing alluvium has its own characteristics, origins, and economic potential. Below is a detailed overview of the main types of gold-bearing alluvium and how they form. 1. Streambed placers, alluvial and alluvial channel placers. These are the most common and best-known types of gold-bearing alluvium, found directly within active river or creek channels. Streambed placers form as gold is eroded from bedrock and carried by water until it settles in cracks, crevices, potholes, or behind obstacles where water slows. Gold characteristics, nuggets, coarse grains, and flakes, depending on proximity to the source. Geological control, the shape of the riverbed is critical, riffles, meanders, and waterfalls act as natural traps. Economic significance, many historic gold rushes, such as those in California, 1849, and Alaska, began with streambed placer discoveries. 2. Floodplain placers. Floodplain placers form when rivers overflow their banks during floods, spreading sediments, including fine gold, over wide, flat plains. Unlike streambed placers, the gold here is usually finer and more thinly dispersed, since the energy of floodwaters is lower. Gold characteristics, fine dust, flakes, and small grains rather than nuggets. Geological control, best developed in low-gradient, meandering rivers with wide valleys. Economic significance, typically less concentrated than channel placers, but may cover large areas and yield significant amounts of gold with large-scale mining. 3. Alluvial Terrace Deposits, Ancient River Placers Over long geological timescales, rivers cut deeper channels, abandoning older riverbeds higher up on valley sides. These abandoned channels, preserved as terraces, may still contain rich gold-bearing alluvium. They are often called fossil placers. Gold characteristics can contain both coarse and fine gold, often cemented into gravel layers. Geological control, typically found several meters above the current river level, requiring excavation. Economic significance, some of the richest placer deposits in history have been ancient terraces reworked by modern miners, e.g., in California and Siberia. 4. Bench placers. Bench placers are similar to terrace deposits but usually represent remnants of former river channels left perched on valley sides as the river migrated or incised deeper. They are sometimes small in size but can be highly concentrated. Gold characteristics, often coarse and nuggety, since finer materials may have been washed away over time. Geological control, occur in narrow, elevated benches above the current stream. 
Economic significance, historically important in regions like the Klondike, where miners chased old benches for coarse nuggets. 5. Deltaic and Estuarine Placers Where rivers meet lakes, inland seas, or the ocean, gold and other heavy minerals are deposited in deltas, estuaries, or along beaches. Here, wave action and currents further sort the sediments, concentrating gold in layers. Gold characteristics, generally fine-grained, but may include small nuggets if transported from nearby sources. Geological control, found in distributary channels, coastal bars, and storm-deposited beach ridges. Economic significance, more difficult to work due to mixing with marine sediments, but some coastal deposits, e.g., Nome, Alaska, have been very productive. 6. Alluvial placers, slope and residual deposits. Although technically not alluvium in the strict sense, alluvial deposits are closely related and often grade into alluvial placers downslope. These form when gold is released from bedrock and accumulates in soil or weathered rock near its original source, often transported only short distances by gravity, rainwash, or small streams. Gold characteristics, often very coarse, including large nuggets, since little transport has occurred. Geological control found on hillsides, at the base of slopes, or above active stream channels. Economic significance, frequently mined as indicators of nearby hard rock gold sources. 7. Glacial and outwash placers. In regions once covered by glaciers, gold can be trapped in glacial till, a mixture of clay, sand, gravel, and boulders, or reworked into meltwater streams and outwash plains. Gold characteristics often mixed sizes, from fine flour gold to small nuggets. Geological control, associated with glacial moraines, eskers, and meltwater channels. Economic significance, widespread but irregular, requiring detailed exploration, common in Alaska and Canada. Sparkle Summary The main types of gold-bearing alluvium include streambed placers, floodplain placers, alluvial terraces, benches, deltaic deposits, alluvial placers, and glacial placers. Each type forms in a specific geomorphological setting, with gold distribution controlled by river energy, sediment sorting, and geological history. Streambed and terrace placers are usually the richest and most famous, while floodplain and deltaic placers may cover larger areas but with finer gold. What are the properties of gold-bearing alluvium? Gold-bearing alluvium has a set of physical, geological, and mineralogical properties that make it unique compared to ordinary river sediments. These properties determine not only how it forms and where it accumulates but also how valuable and workable it is for mining. Below is a detailed explanation of the main properties of gold-bearing alluvium. 1. Composition. Gold-bearing alluvium is composed of unconsolidated sediments such as gravel, sand, silt, and clay, mixed with heavy minerals and varying amounts of organic material. What distinguishes it from ordinary alluvium is the presence of free gold particles, ranging from microscopic grains, flour gold, to large nuggets. In addition to gold, the heavy mineral fraction often contains magnetite, hematite, garnet, zircon, ilmenite, rutile, cassiterite, and sometimes platinum group minerals. These minerals often occur together because, like gold, they are dense and resistant to weathering. 2. Grain Size Distribution The texture of gold-bearing alluvium is highly variable, depending on the energy of the depositional environment. High-energy rivers, coarse gravels, cobbles, and boulders mixed with nuggets and coarse flakes of gold. Moderate-energy streams, sands and pebbles with medium-sized gold flakes. Low-energy floodplains and deltas, fine silt and clay with extremely fine gold dust. Gold itself tends to be concentrated in the coarser, denser layers at the base of alluvial sequences, often resting directly on bedrock or on clay layers that act as natural traps. 3. Density and Hydraulic Behavior One of the most important properties of gold-bearing alluvium is the effect of density sorting. Gold has a density of about 19.3 g-cm superscript 3, much higher than quartz, 2.65 g-cm superscript 3, or feldspar. 
This means that in a moving stream, gold particles settle quickly whenever water velocity decreases. As a result, gold-bearing alluvium typically displays stratification, with gold concentrated in the lowest layers, often mixed with other heavy minerals, black sands, while lighter minerals like quartz and feldspar remain higher in the sequence. 4. Gold Particle Characteristics the physical characteristics of the gold itself play a major role in defining the properties of gold-bearing alluvium. Shape, gold particles may be angular, close to the source, flaky, or well-rounded, after long transport. Size, ranges from microscopic dust, flower gold, to nuggets weighing several kilograms. Purity, alluvial gold is often of higher purity than load gold because weathering and transport remove many impurities. Its fineness, gold to silver ratio, can be 850 to 950 parts per thousand. 5. Stratigraphic Position Gold bearing alluvium typically occurs in specific layers within sedimentary sequences. Concentrated at the base of gravel beds, directly above bedrock or clay, false bedrock. Found in riffle zones, point bars, and channel bends where water loses energy. Preserved in terraces and benches, representing old river courses. This stratigraphic control is a key property used in exploration, since miners often look for the pay streak or pay layer at the bottom of an alluvial sequence. 6. Thickness and lateral extent. The thickness of gold bearing alluvium can vary greatly. In small creeks, it may be just a few centimeters thick. In major river valleys, it can reach several meters with multiple gold-rich layers. Laterally, gold-bearing alluvium can extend for kilometers along river channels or floodplains, although the richest concentrations, pay streaks, are usually localized in narrow zones. 7. Mineralogical Associations Gold-bearing alluvium rarely contains only gold. It is commonly associated with heavy minerals, magnetite, hematite, ilmenite, zircon, chromite. Other metals, cassiterite, tin, platinum group minerals, shaylite, tungsten, and occasionally diamonds in certain regions. These associations help geologists identify promising placer environments and trace them back to potential hard rock sources. 8. Economic Properties The economic value of gold-bearing alluvium depends on several key properties. Gold grade, concentration usually expressed in grams of gold per cubic meter of gravel. Rich placers may contain several grams per cubic meter, while marginal ones may hold only fractions of a gram. Gold size distribution, nuggets and coarse flakes are easier and cheaper to recover, while flower gold requires advanced recovery methods. Accessibility, alluvium near the surface, in streambeds or shallow terraces, is easier to mine than deep buried placers requiring large-scale excavation. 9. Geomorphological Setting The landscape context is also a defining property, gold-bearing alluvium is typically found in valleys, riverbeds, terraces, floodplains, or glacial outwash plains. Its presence reflects both local topography and long-term geological processes, making it an indicator of erosion and transport pathways. Sparkle Summary The properties of gold-bearing alluvium include its composition, gold plus heavy minerals within unconsolidated sediments, grain size and stratification, density-driven concentration, characteristics of the gold particles, stratigraphic position, thickness and extent, mineralogical associations, economic potential, and geomorphological setting. Together, these properties make alluvial gold deposits one of the most significant and historically important sources of the metal, accessible to both ancient miners with simple pans and modern operations using dredges and heavy equipment.